Thank you for listening to this recording for an update on the US 34 at 35th and 47th Avenues project. This project is being led by CDOT Region 4 and the City of Greeley. As we all adjust to the current circumstances surrounding the coronavirus, we've made the decision to give you a virtual update rather than in person. Keep in mind that this meeting has been pre-recorded and we will not be answering questions during or immediately after the presentation. However, your input is very important to us and we will answer your questions as quickly as we can. We encourage you to send us your comments and concerns. The project email is us34infogreely at gmail.com. We have set up a brief survey on this project to get your input. Please tell your friends and neighbors about this survey and help us spread the word. Here's our meeting agenda. We will give an overview of the project, discuss the project goals, existing conditions, our process to narrow down design alternatives, and our next steps. Let's start out with an overview of the project. Last year, CDOT led a Planning and Environmental Linkages, or PEL, study for US 34 to better understand the corridor and local needs of communities in the area. An overall vision for US 34 was created during this study. Our specific project is within the Greeley Expressway portion of that larger corridor vision. 35th Avenue and 47th Avenue were both identified as critical intersections for improvement. We initiated this project at the beginning of 2020 to target improvements at the 35th Avenue and 47th Avenue intersections. Currently, we are working on updating the data gathered during the PEL study. We are looking at traffic conditions at each intersection and revisiting the design options identified during the study. We are also looking at new design options. We will be completing an environmental analysis to study any impacts to sensitive resources as part of this project. Next is the project purpose and goals. Here are the goals identified during the PEL study. Increase safety, accommodate regional growth, and the increased traffic from travel and tourism on the corridor, and increased reliability of travel along the corridor while balancing local access, mobility, and freight needs. The project-specific purpose and goals build on the goals developed during the PEL. Designs for the intersections at 35th and 47th should improve safety, increase capacity, reduce congestion, and improve throughput, which means the amount of traffic that can move through the corridor. Safely accommodating bicyclists, pedestrians, and transit is another one of our goals. We'll be aiming to meet these goals while minimizing private property impacts and impacts to the environment. To meet our goals, we are exploring converting each intersection into a grade separated interchange. This rendering shows what a grade separated interchange with US 34 going over 47th Avenue could look like. Grade separated interchanges have a bridge structure that carries one roadway over the other and ramps to provide access to the elevated road. Next, we will discuss the existing conditions. We will start with a broad look at the region as a whole and then focus in on the project area. The North Front Range is the fastest growing region in the state. Between the years 2010 and 2018, population growth more than doubled. Job growth in Weld County has also increased. As a result, traffic congestion has continued to increase. Here we can see the population growth that was mentioned previously. The graph on the left tracks Greeley's population growth from 1960 to 2020. Economic growth follows the steady upward trend in population shown in the graph. The graph on the right 
shows the estimated growth in housing units from the years 2020 to 2025. More people and more households means more people driving on the roads and more congestion. The project area spans along US 34 from west to east and covers both the intersections of 47th Avenue and 35th Avenue. These two intersections are two of the top three locations with the highest number of crashes in the corridor. 47th Avenue has the second most crashes and 35th has the third most crashes. Zooming in on the 35th Avenue intersection, we're using arrows to show where existing service passes or fails. As you can see, all of the arrows except one are failing. Most of the crashes at intersections are rear end crashes as shown in the pie chart. 63% of all crashes are rear end. The blue text on either side of the intersection shows the increase in traffic expected by the year 2045. It is expected that traffic will increase by more than 20,000 vehicles between now and 2045. More traffic leads to more congestion and a larger number of crashes at the intersection. The aim is to fix this issue with our project. Here's a map of 47th Avenue in US 34. Red arrows show where intersections fail and the blue text shows the expected increase in the number of vehicles on the roadway by the year 2045. More than half of the crashes at the intersection are rear end crashes, 56% to be exact. Next up, we will discuss how we are screening the various designs and options. We consider a number of factors when comparing different design options. In addition to whether the options will help reduce congestion and improve safety, we also look at ways to minimize impacts to surrounding property and ways to protect the natural environment, including wetlands, air quality, and endangered species, amongst others. Here's where we are in the process, the red arrow. We have identified three different options for each intersection. The criteria that we are using is listed and includes improve safety and access, limit property impacts, meet local multimodal needs, consider impacts to noise, and improve traffic condition. We're using these criteria to compare the options and eventually help narrow down to one preferred option for 35th Avenue and then for 47th Avenue. At the end of this presentation, there is a link to a brief survey, which gives you an opportunity to provide input on the criteria that we will use to evaluate the alternatives. Please keep the following survey questions in mind as you review the alternatives. The next three slides describe the alternatives for 35th Avenue at US 34. The first option for US 34 at 35th is a partial diamond interchange and loop. US 34 would go over 35th Avenue with a bridge that we show here in purple. The two ramps to the north make half a diamond shape from a bird's eye view. The option would require drivers to use on and off ramps to access the freeway. Bubble A shows how westbound US 34 traffic exits to 35th and the traffic movements at 28th Street. In this option, access to 35th Avenue from 28th Street would be limited to right turns only. The red bus route number one on 28th Street would remain the same. Bubble B shows a new traffic signal that would control access to and from the loop ramp for eastbound US 34. The second option is a frontage road underpass with a loop. The east side of this interchange is where the design is modified. Bubble A shows how direct access from 28th Street to 35th Avenue is restricted to right in, right out only. However, access between 28th Street and 35th would be maintained through the use of the westbound exit ramp. 28th Street traffic can get onto 35th Avenue using a short connector road onto the new US 34 
westbound exit ramp, and then turn on to 35th at the signal. Traffic from 35th can access 28th Street using a connector road that would go under the US 34 off ramp. The third option is a tight urban diamond with a loop. This option is similar to the first option, but with a variation for northbound to westbound traffic using a turnaround on the east side of the interchange. Bubble A shows how this movement operates to eliminate left turns directly from 35th Avenue. In this scenario, traffic traveling from 35th Avenue to US 34 westbound would take the same exit as people going eastbound, but would travel under the US 34 to merge with westbound US 34 traffic exiting to 35th Avenue. Similar to the first option, access to 35th Avenue from 28th Street would be limited to right turns only. Other movements on 28th Street would be maintained. Next, we will review three alternatives at 47th Avenue and US 34. The first option is a standard diamond with four ramps providing on and off access to US 34. Signals would control traffic where the ramps meet 47th north and south of the bridge. Bubble A shows the movements through the intersection north of the bridge. These movements would be the same for the intersection south of the bridge. Access to properties, shopping, and recreation around the interchange would remain the same for this option. A diverging diamond interchange, or DDI, is the second option for 47th Avenue. This option reduces potential approach turn crashes. It looks similar to the first option because it has the four ramps making up the diamond shape. However, as you can see in bubble A, the movements through the interchange would be different. At the signals north and south of the bridge, traffic shown with the blue and yellow arrows would cross sides to access on ramps to US 34 or continue driving on 47th. Option three is a single point urban interchange or SPUI. There's a single signal in the middle of the SPUI under the bridge rather than at intersections to the north and south. That's where the SPUI gets the single point part of its name. All of the left turning movements would be controlled by the signal under the bridge and right turn lanes are channelized onto 47th Avenue. US 34 traffic would travel unstopped over the intersection. Bubble A shows how traffic on 47th Avenue would go under the bridge and turn left to access the freeway ramps. The single signal on 47th allows more efficient traffic flow through the interchange because it enables free flowing right turns and eliminates an intersection. Next, we will discuss what to expect moving forward and how you can participate in the process. Here's the schedule. Right now, we are in the narrow down alternatives phase. After we select a single option for each intersection together with your input, we will finalize the design. Full funding has not been identified for these interchange projects. If full funding is secured, construction could start as early as the fourth quarter of year 2022 and would last for approximately two years. Thank you for listening for an update on this project. Your input is important to us. If you would like to ask a question or provide a comment, please email us at us 34 info at gmail.com or call our project phone line at 970-616-4008. We would also appreciate if you would take a few minutes to follow the link and complete our survey. The survey has questions about the different design options we covered today, and we want your input on those. Thank you.